We're back over here in Stoughton, Mass at our Lake Drive Custom. You guys need to check out how much steel we put in this house. There is a ton of steel in this project, uh, and there's a few reasons why. If you guys remember, we're dealing with a very tight lot here, and we couldn't fit a traditional deck off the back of the house. So number one are these three steel beams that run all the way back inside the house. These are our cantilevering beams for our rear deck. These are basically where the entire steel design started. We have this center one that runs all the way to the front of the house, actually has a bolted connection up at that front entryway. And then we have the two outside ones that run um, the better part of two thirds of the way in based on the, the one third that it hangs out of the house, which is pretty industry standard for a cantilever. You kind of go two thirds in, one third out. But let's step back and you actually see in between those two posts that are supporting those steel beams, you actually have a, a, a post that runs all the way up. Now that beam is in the first floor ceiling or the second floor deck. That right there goes from that post to a post that lands on the garage wall. And then there's a post adjacent to that that supports another steel beam in the garage. Let's talk about the garage real quick. The garage, we didn't want a post in the middle. We wanted that to be a clear span. You come in, it's comfortable. You're not banging your doors on a post. We opted to go steel. And that right there is actually supporting the weight of not only the master suite above it, but also the roof load is transferred down into that. Now working our way back, we have that, that uh, W8 which is the beam that runs in that, in that first floor ceiling or second floor deck. And that's got a short beam going off the front and a long beam coming off the back here that supports a small cantilever that's above this rear deck. The whole reason behind this is we have not actually finalized our kitchen, dining, living room layout. We've been playing with a bunch of different designs. In the original drawing, we actually had a bearing wall that divided the front dining room from the rear kitchen and it just kept getting in the way of our design. So what we did is we said, if we can structure this so all the interior walls are non-load bearing, you know, then we have the flexibility to really design the, the first floor any way we would like. So that's why we opted to do the additional steel in that first floor ceiling. So before we get into the fun stuff of actually erecting the steel, uh, we spent the last couple weeks working with our steel fabricator uh, on shop, the shop drawing process. And what that process looks like is we take our architectural drawings and our structural drawings, overlay them, and then figure out the best way to fabricate and then also erect the steel on site. From there, we produce shop drawings that we then sat down with the engineer and architect and we want to make sure we don't miss that step because for instance, in this project, we actually ended up relocating some of the posts uh, so they weren't you know, in the way of future walls or created a weird bump out actually at the entryway. The shop drawing was drawn the way it was done on the architectural, but it didn't work in the field. So back and forth a few times with them until we were 100% sure the architect signs off on our shop drawing process. That stuff goes into fabrication. We schedule a crane and we start erecting the steel. So I want to talk a little bit about how we came up with our installation process. Uh, we opted for a leveling plate method. So everything was prefabricated in the shop. It's all bolted together. But the nice thing here is there's actually some split washers under the, these leveling plates. This allows us the ability to adjust the height of these posts up and down. The framer was on site this morning uh, as the steel was going in and we got everything relatively close. But as we start running our floor joists across um, the deck, we're able to adjust these posts and get these things exactly where they need to be. So that's the benefit of doing a prefabricated uh, unit and having the ability to adjust on the fly. Everything on site that you see here, everything's bolted together. There was no welding on site. There was a little torch work because we missed a couple holes, but not a huge deal. So one thing you might notice is our steel beams actually sit lower than the top of our floor joist. Now the point of that is we're actually gonna be installing three pieces of dimensional lumber on the flat on top of our steel beam. Now this does two things here. Number one, it gives us a, a nailer for the subfloor to run across. We're gonna install hardwood. We're not gonna run the risk of driving a nail down, hitting a piece of steel and dealing with that headache, right? Um, it also gives us that nailer for, for our subfloor and it's just continuous wood all the way across that first floor deck. But number two, let's follow, follow me out here. We have this deck sitting here in New England with snow buildup and things like that, 
we traditionally have a step outside of our entry door. What we're gonna do is, I just mentioned that we have three ply uh, dimensional stock on the flat on the inside of our house. We're only gonna have one on the outside. Now, what that will do is it will give us a three inch step. So on the inside will be three inches higher than the outside, gives, giving us that small step so we can flash our door sill pan properly, bringing it down onto the deck. One thing that came up actually early on in the design was we have this massive steel beam. In the winter, it's gonna get really, really cold and that thermal transfer is gonna go right inside. And now inside, we have a finished basement. This was one detail I went back to the architect and expressed my concern. The solution that we actually came up with was prior to hanging our floor joists, we're actually gonna wrap the whole beam with zip plywood. We're actually gonna use an acrylic G-tape uh, flashing tape across the top of it before the decking goes on and then wrap the entire beam um, with the zip uh, sheathing and tape it just as though it was you know the rest of the framing like the walls. We'll get that wrapped up, we'll prevent the air from directly uh, attacking that steel uh, and then we'll have a second layer beyond that zip plywood of say mahogany or ipe, whatever we decide to do for the actual deck and or trim on the house. The other thing we're doing to help uh, counteract the thermal transfer is we're actually gonna be spray foaming around the beam on the inside. So being that we're gonna have a finished ceiling that will be up inside the ceiling, we're gonna spray foam um, from the outside wall and we're gonna go probably about eight to 10 feet and wrap that beam with spray foam. So even the little, the little temperature decrease in the winter that that beam sees, by the time it makes it eight to 10 feet back, we're not gonna really run into those freezing temperatures mixing with the heated and tempered space on the inside. Between the detail of the sheathing on the outside and the spray foam on the inside, I think we'll be able to counteract the issue that basically came up in conversation and we're not running into any issues, possible mold or moisture infiltration. Steel guys just took off. Um, you can see behind me that we have not only the first floor, but we also have the second floor steel installed. Uh, this is actually a huge accomplishment for us because we originally thought we were gonna have to do this in two mobilizations. We are able to detail our connections correctly, so we were able to stand everything today, saving us the hassle of getting a crane for a second day, the cost for install for a second day. Not only that, but just from a schedule standpoint, steel's up, framer's gonna be back on site tomorrow, and we're gonna start working on the first floor deck. We're using iJoyce and we're using the Advantech inch and an eighth subfloor. The reason being is that we're going for a super stiff floor. It's a really big open floor plan. We're probably gonna have a pretty big island. Uh, the house is designed to entertain and have people, so we wanna make sure our floor is as stiff as we can get it. We got a couple cool details that we're gonna talk about in our wall framing, but one of them being the Huber Zip R. Um, we're gonna be using the Zip R9, which is an inch and a half foam on the backside of our sheathing. So stay tuned for the next episode as we dig into the first floor framing here at our Lake Drive Custom. Mm -hmm.